So, um, to just help us focus on the issue of um, what do we, how do we think about this transitional economy, um, we're, we're doing hard work. We're trying to think about on the ground and structures and theories of change and systemic issues, and it's hard to do both of those things at once. Um, I've been inspired by um, some writing of Vakal Havel and his people that he worked with, and they came up with a term called the parallel polis, which I think is a useful, which I, uh, is something I'm trying to think about, how that can learn from that and think about our parallel political economy, is how I think about it. Um, and in the parallel polis in the period of Soviet um, rule in Czechoslovakia, um, the people around Charter 77 said, we need to learn the skills of participatory democracy. And so they created spaces in which to do that. They felt that my understanding, I'm not an expert on this, my understanding was they couldn't um, confront the state directly. And the important work to do was to develop the skills so that when the opportunity came, they were ready to step in. And I wonder if these um, co-ops and these other on-the-ground um, experiments, demonstration projects, um, um, uh, proof gardens, the, the Dutch call them other models. Other models, thank you. Um, if those aren't some of the places where we learn the skills of a parallel political economy, um, and that, so it's important for us to focus on awesome. doing the work. I'm so happy you brought up the skills, the sort of qualifications to get the work done that we're talking about. Of course, that's my bias toward work, so workforce development focus. Um, but what are the skills necessary to move us forward, really? You know, there are technical or hard skills and soft skills. What but the reason why I said it wasn't because of that. Yeah. Um, so I just want to make sure that there's space for the words I was saying, I'm sorry. which was that um, I'm wondering if thinking about the parallel political economy helps us work at both of those levels of on the ground and structural. Okay. Great. Thank you. I think there was somebody. Yep. Hi, Trina. Um, so this is kind of off topic from what I was saying. It's a little hard to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you stand up. Okay. <laughs> Ask yourself. Um, so I, for me, sometimes it's it's difficult to always think big picture, and it gets overwhelming to always think big picture. And sometimes I feel like that's where a lot of the problems with. It's kind of like answers. I didn't get your name from Ecuador. Um, yours and Josh's and John O'Dell's and even the little small tidbit that Judy said um, is that like when things just start to get too big, you lose that accountability. So, like Judy was saying, we have invited politicians, but they don't show up unless they have a space to talk. So what they expect when, 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 you, when they get invited, that, that they should, should speak, that they should have the stage. Um, the, this, and, and this is another piece, but like this, the structure of, of public meetings are very, like they, they really instill those systems of power. The structure, structure of public meetings are, you know, the citizens have like this very small space sometimes to speak, and you have um, the, your elected officials kind of sitting in this room in this like higher pedestal looking down on their public. Um, when they, when, when they are, are running, you know, there's a lot of door knocking, there's a lot of like going out and meeting the people that they're with, but then sometimes when they, when they get into their office, um, you, you, there's a disconnect, you know, you lose, you lose them. So I guess like one of the things that would be nice is like how do we, how do we connect that disconnect? Um, so like I think when things get too big, Again, you lose that accountability. We need to like bring it back down to the local level. When corporate, when small businesses become corporations, that's when you you see an issue. So that's kind of yeah. Mm -hmm. <coughs> good. Sorry. No, go ahead. I'm not really sure how to facilitate this anymore. I'm, I'm not. So, someone over here has been waiting. I'm trying to be helpful, but I feel like <laughs> I'm going to kind of go over here. Go ahead. Um, well, I guess speaking to 
how do we get things on the ground first. Um, what, sorry, my name is Hilab, and I wrote my master's paper last year looking at the green economy here in Worcester, so looking at um, first internationally, um, looking at the systemic level, looking at policies, and then looking at what's going on on the ground here. Um, I spoke to some different actors, looking at the different um, scales of what, what is happening here in Worcester. And so one of the things, I guess you mentioned how do we get this stuff on the ground, I think one major thing that we've been talking about is um, language definitions and goals. So what is the objective? And I think what I've been feeling just in this room is that we're looking, our conversation has been kind of polarized. Polarized, excuse me. It's like, um, you know, should we go against the man? Are we joining the man? But there are all these different <laughs> things happening in between joining the man and going against the man, different ways of interacting at all these different levels, all these different networks. So I think it's about getting specific in what's the objective, but it's also about looking a little bit farther back and looking at this big network and this big map as all these different things kind of happen, happening simultaneously. Um, so one thing that kind of came out of my research was looking really specifically at niches. Who is doing what? And specifically, how are we going to build those partnerships? Um, and so it also kind of goes back to what we were looking at in terms of um, these chains of production, distribution. And so, so who specifically is going to fit in which of these pieces, and then how can we have those work together? Whether that's, you know, and working on all these different levels. So there's going to be a lot of them. Sorry, I don't know. No, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Boone? Yeah, um, I, I like what was just said a lot. Hello. And um, I think that maybe that kind of goes hand in hand with what was said earlier, um, and I don't know. Um, what was said about engaging in practices that, and I think maybe what you're referring to is less about like, sort of technical skill and know-how and more about like social skills, right? And sort of um, ways, figuring out ways of being together um, in economically that we're not used to, right? And beginning to sort of develop almost sort of like the desires to do it, right? Once we begin to like practice these things. And I think like what was being said is there's like multiple ways to get there and we need to maybe keep all of them in mind which was, I think, a suggestion that Penn made in the country as well. And I just want to point out, I don't know if I have anything to say about this, but I just want to point out the reactions, the different reactions to um, the Wellspring Initiative, um, like, like really sort of different emotional reactions to it. Um, on the one hand, you know, and I'm, I'm, I think I'm sympathetic maybe to both ends of it, but on, on the one hand, this um, reaction to like it being this sort of top-down hierarchical approach to development, even though the end result is Work at Cooperatives and uh, yeah, oh sorry Wellspring Wellspring yeah. is the uh, iteration in Springfield sorry of, uh, right and um, and even though like the um, you suggested at the end that even though organizers of Evergreen are hoping that it's the next they're trying to figure out how to make the next set of cooperatives be more um, uh, uh, less cut down and more um, horizontal right so maybe there's something to that maybe like the idea isn't to say like that it's crappy, but look for like the good things about it, right? And where we can actually uh, uh, further uh, build this movement through, you know, everything is gonna be like somewhat a little bit, you know, fractured and not like perfect, right? Um, and then the, on the other end, I, I guess I just wanna, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, John, but I'm just wondering like what, um, what like to me it seems like um, a pretty conservative economic development initiative in a lot of ways, right? That what you're doing is you're uh, creating jobs, that are going to actually stay in the community and build wealth in the community, and then the whole community benefits. Um, cross class tax bases are built. There's more jobs, there's more businesses, more commerce. So what is exactly so, like frightening about that it's, to it's to not, city government? It's not the, uh, what you're saying. I don't think anyone would think that that was frightening. I think what's, what's and it seems like it'd be attractive, right? It would be attractive. I think, though, that the way the system's set up, and as everyone knows, that, that it's based on the lowest uh, cost uh, for folks. And that, that right there is probably one of the fundamental issues that needs to be addressed um, as to how, but how we do that is really back to some of the, you know, my concern and, and others that were brought up in terms of what exactly is the, um, are, are you trying to do here? Are you trying to change what exists, or are you trying to build something new? And obviously, the, there's a real, and there's no reason to say that you can't do both either. I'm not, I'm not, uh, or that there's even other alternatives as well. But 
I mean, Joe's point's very valid that these are real issues and they're happening now, but if I may be so bold, is that this is, represents one uh, uh, side of the equation. There's lots and lots of other people, as we all know, on the other side, and there's the great middle that sort of uh, just goes, depending on who's yelling louder, it seems, uh, but, and who's in power. And, uh, and I think that this is the, the one advantage of that. It obviously hasn't worked particularly well, but does have one systemic advantage of that, is that, is that there's an opportunity here that if a cohesive message can be sent out and delivered through the existing media, because we don't have a lot of time, and that's a real issue, but there's not a lot of time, to, 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 to Joe's point in particular, um, but to get that out there, that there's an alternative option, that would be very valuable. But I think you got to have what that uh, an alternative might be. Uh, yeah, I, sorry, Dan. Um, but uh, <laughs> other options um, out there, that, I think that needs to be addressed. You know, speaking strictly from my, my governmental position, as it were, um, until that gets answered, uh, folks, at least on in the government side, and I suspect on the, on the business side, are going to say, well, I mean, great theory, you know, show me it. What are you doing? What do we got? Everyone wants to know. I mean, they got you know, people very busy. Everyone knows. Two minutes. Tell me what it is. Yeah. And, and that's a tough task. Yeah. Well, all right, so we're going to have guys 